Nate is your typical inverted but highly educated guy working as a data scientist at a big tech company. He's been a data scientist for six years, so he's considered somewhat of a senior data scientist. Let's talk about his life. So our day starts bright and early at 9.45. His daily stand-up doesn't start until 11 a.m. because no one on his team can wake up that early and because Bay Area traffic doesn't die until 10 a.m. Today is one of three days a week he has to commute to campus because leadership thinks it's necessary to collaborate in person. So Nate splashes some water on his face and hops on the shuttle to head into campus where he catches more sleep on the shuttle. He gets into work on time for a scrum meeting. So what's a scrum meeting? It's a five minute meeting with your team to discuss three questions. What did you do yesterday? What will you do today? Do you have any blockers? It's a pretty pointless meeting, but a manager's gotta look like he's managing, right? So after the meeting ends, Nate jumps to the next meeting, which is a code review with a junior data scientist. So what's a junior data scientist? Well, we're really just talking about the first few years of an entry level data scientist. Their job is to learn how to write production level code and to produce outputs that are meaningful to the business. Anything more than that is really just icing on the cake for these young budding data scientists. Sounds easy, right? But it's actually really tough. This guy wasn't a STEM major. In fact, he was a psychology major turned data scientist. Imagine going to school to learn how to read books and write essays, then stepping into your career and being asked to write complex code and understand advanced statistics. This is the stage where we weed out the wannabe data scientists. So we evaluate the juniors based on a few criteria. One, their ability to break down a problem and structure it in some meaningful way. For example, can you take a vague complex problem and break it into bite-sized pieces? Or do you need help doing that? Two, the ability to understand the business question and design an approach that solves the question. Most juniors just want to write overly complex code and use the newest, shiniest tools. That's just asking for a lot of trouble. You're over-engineering the problem and making it much more complicated than it needs to be. We're not rocket scientists. We're scientists managing a social media platform. And third, most importantly, the ability to write good production quality code. Most people don't know how to do this. You need to adhere to the best practices of the company. You need to consider scalability in your code and you need to consider edge cases. So Nate helps this junior clean up his code and offers some advice on how to make more meaningful progress on the project. With that finished, Nate now has a one-on-one -on -one meeting with his manager. These one-on-ones are meant as a discussion around career progression and discussions about new opportunities. These are valuable discussions when done right and will help propel Nate to the next stage of his career. Unfortunately, today there are a lot of issues and a lot of fires, and this one-on-one -on -one time will be used to discuss how to handle these issues. It's sort of a useless 30-minute meeting, but Nate is glad to know that his manager is aligned with the way Nate will approach solving these fires. Being aligned and in sync with your manager and your peers is a great soft skill Nate has developed over his career. He understands that the next step in his career will emphasize soft skills like communication, alignment with cross-functional teams, and other non-data, non-coding things. Now it's finally time to do some real work. Let's start to code. Nate is starting on a new project where he will be building a new recommendation engine for a specific feature in a social media app that doesn't really need any more social media manipulation. So he logs into his workspace, which uses tools made in-house, tools from AWS, his cloud service provider, and other third-party vendors. But he notices a problem. His permissions to access the data in his analytical environment is not working because it seems like the data engineers didn't really do their part. So he puts in the request for the admins to take a look at it, and he can't work until he has the data. But luckily for him, there's an extract of that data in some sort of sandbox environment. So Nate takes a look and quickly realizes that one, 
he needs to clean the hell out of this data, and two, he doesn't understand any of it. So he sets up a meeting with the data subject matter experts, SMEs, so he can understand the logic and the rules behind the data. In the meantime, he'll clean the data the best he can. This is the easy part, but the hard part is really trying to understand the logic of the data so it can be used to build the machine learning model. So with that said, the four hours he set aside to code has basically become useless. He has to wait for help before he can do anything impactful. No modeling, no advanced infrastructure design or tooling, nothing. But that's somewhat typical, as much of Nate's time is usually spent preparing rather than building. But he's seasoned. He understands that prep work is 90% of the project, and building the model is the easy part. So instead, he goes to grab some food from the cafeteria and answers emails until it's time to go home. And on a typical day, he goes home at around 7 p.m., but he feels a little unsatisfied because so many things were left undone today. But he's home now, so he'll answer some emails and binge watch on YouTube, Reddit, and Blind until 2 a.m. before this day repeats all over again. That is the day of a typical mid-career senior data scientist. If you want more data science resources, please subscribe to this channel and go to stratascratch.com for your data science resource.